Welcome Yamhill County to Speaking Frankly. I'm your host, Howie Harkema, and our tagline is, and how we doing? So today I have three guests, and uh, we're going to be talking about Harvest Fest 2019. Uh, and I am welcoming Charles Hillstad. Thank you for being here. And Cynthia Christensen. And Tony Meeker. Hi there. Hi. We're glad to have you all back again. And um, so we'll just start out. So what is the difference between Farm Fest, which is held usually in April, um, and Harvest Fest? Well, um, Farm Fest is predominantly all done with horses or mules. And that's for the preparation of the field and the ground for getting ready for planting. So we have a lot of similar activities going on, but it's that's what's going on with that. Harvest Fest is dealing with the harvesting of everything, and we're using uh, everything from uh, old-time uh, tractors, uh, horses, mules. Uh, we were using a threshing machine from the 1880 for uh, part of it this time. We've got some unique new things going on, but it's the harvesting end of it. So it is uh, a little bit different. And Farm Fest is a one-day event, and Harvest Fest is... It takes us two days to <laughs> get everything harvested, so we're open for two days, and we are open uh, both days uh, from uh, 10 to 4. Well, talk about Hay Day. I know that you guys are exploring doing a new event as well. We have a, an event we tried out this year, and we're doing that with 4-H uh, Wagon Train and some of the... Uh, uh, mule people with that and uh, we were haying this year using old time haying equipment, baling equipment and showing that and we had a huge pancake feed. We had about 300 people show up to Woo! the event. It was also an interesting experiment because uh, some of this old equipment, uh, you now know why they don't use it anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> it was really kind of fun uh, because there's no manuals that come with it. So, so watching uh, the crew try to figure out how to do it, and they did a really great job, but uh, it was a real education. I'm sure it was. Um, so how long has Harvest Fest now be, been going? Well, last year was our 10th anniversary, so technically it's our 11th, but... The first year we only harvested. We didn't have a big celebration like we do now. But so, it was at the Heritage yes. Center? Yes. Prior to that, it wasn't sponsored by the Historical Society. The Watts family had a harvest fest with a, a threshing machine powered by uh, old tractors. Imagine well. that at the Watts family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so if you could bring up the poster. Um, so what is the dates this year and the times and all of that? So. August 17 and 18, that's a Saturday and Sunday, so plenty of opportunity for you to come out and, and a goodly amount of time to 10 to 4. Uh, things will uh, be going on the entire period of time, and there's a lot of stuff going on uh, for adults, for kids, uh, for everybody in between. Um, and as I'm going to be talking about a little later on, this is living history, so you get to actually ride in a stagecoach. We have antique cars that... Uh, are available for rides. Uh, I think you said we're getting a, a donkey uh, uh, with a uh, um, some sort of passenger uh, wagon? Uh, no, not that I'm sure of, but I know we're going to be having our Chevrolet and we are going to be having uh, uh, Heidi, which is a 1912 International. Wow. And everything's working. The blacksmith shop is working, showing how things are done, the sawmill is working. The school is open uh, with uh, docents to uh, show you how it was done back then. Uh, you can sit in the seats and uh, be uh, chastised for uh, not setting up straight. Does uh, the teacher have a ruler in her hand? Well, we, we, we're not <laughs> sure yet if we've got our school marm, Ms. Sherman, coming. If we can pull it off for one of the sessions, we will do that. We will at least have explaining what school was like and uh, some story time uh, a couple times each day and uh, answering of any inane questions you may have had with the restoration or work at the schoolhouse. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and, and a lot of things that uh, you can get hands-on experience with. Uh, you know, kids can see how a, uh, a, a washing was done back then without sure. an automatic washing machine. Uh, they can uh, see a lot of animals to pet. So. We are going to be having uh, the uh, Amity FFA is supposed to be uh, bringing some of their animals at state fairs like the following week. So. Uh, a number of them will be bringing animals. We'll have a few of our uh, own volunteers, uh, friendly critters, will also be present there. 
Would you like to talk about some of your sponsors this, that are helping this year? Uh, go ahead. Tony, you want to take this one? Yeah, we have uh, sponsors from Les Schwab, uh, from uh, Northwest Logging, uh, Wilco Farmers. Um, th th these folks have been stalwart supporters of the program out there. Uh, this is their sixth and seventh years in many cases for supporting us and making it happen. I think people need to remember that the Yamhill County Historical Society is an all-volunteer organization. Right. And in order to pay the bills at the Heritage Center, we have to raise some money. Right. Um, and that's, that's why we have these events. It's a dual function. First, we want to educate the people of the culture and, and uh, heritage of the Yamhill Valley. Right. That's our main mission. But in order to keep that huge facility in excess of $6 million in investment, there's a light bill, there's a, a garbage bill, you know, all of these things, and we have to pay for them. And, and that $6 million, that's just for the real estate, yeah. uh, the, the, the value of all the antiques that we have. Right. What, about 100 or so? Uh, well, there's over, yeah, there's more than 100 antiques, so, and some of them are priceless. Right. So the insurance, just for that, must be astronomical. Uh, our insurance bill runs about a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and, and don't forget, there'd be uh, music most of the time, food, um, all kinds of demonstrations going on at uh, various places. The uh, the covered wagon will be out there, and you can. We will have lots of activities for kids to be doing out by the covered wagon and in there. So there's always something to be. Uh, getting your hands with or maybe you're wanting just to be in the out of the sun in the back and trying out the pedal tractors in the main museum that's always a nice cool place to hang out so have you ordered good weather for these two days already we have <laughs> we've had a number of prayers said for that. <laughs> the worst weather we've ever had in the last 10 years was just a little bit of drizzle both days and that was in the morning first thing so right. The rest of the temperatures were very pleasant when we did have that, though. Well, so, I've been out there when it was 95 degrees. We're, we're going to have it be <laughs> 88 degrees with awesome. a nice breeze, I promise. And we have a lot of cover, too, for the, the when people are watching uh, the different uh, tools being used, sure. there's places for them to sit under cover. And, and the whole museum uh, uh, set of buildings is open as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got, what, 50,000? square feet under roof uh, there so that plenty of opportunity for shade yes and is the uh, are there square dancers this year yes there are there are square dancers uh, and we don't want to forget all of the vendors that show up too we have in uh, two of our larger buildings we have vendors that bring their wares in addition uh, to local historical societies that promote their programs um, the uh, Native Plant Society, soil sure. and water conservation, all those kind of things happen. Uh, it really is a very big community event for family. And um, in the separate building from the what I w would call the museum area, the other building. It's so um, called our activities building. Right. Um, um, there's photography, there's yes. um, spinning wheels and all Usually kinds of... Usually the lace makers. We yeah. have the general store, which will have some docents in you typically. We've got a uh, replica cabin area of what an early house structure would have been like. Um, we have a bank area. There's a lot of esoteric skills that are on display <laughs> there. <laughs> Uh, and, and by the way, I might mention um, about the blacksmith shop. Yes. Uh, we, we've started having classes for it. There was a lot of interest in uh, learning how to be blacksmiths, and uh, uh, we'll teach you how to do it. Uh, not necessarily at uh, Harvest Fest, but you can sign up for classes there. Yeah, there's even one for young people called Fun at the Forge, and uh, they have a number of teenage students. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's amazing how that blacksmithing has taken off. We have over 15 blacksmiths now. Oh, and, and one of the things that we have that's relatively new, we now have ways in which the kids can learn how log cabins were built. So imagine Lincoln Logs exploded in size. <laughs> well, our Pioneer <laughs> Days students over the last several years, which come in October and in May, we had them starting to, one of our volunteers thought, oh, well, we should go make a cabin. 
And so we ended up playing with the idea, well, how can we do this so the kids can do all the work? Well, they peeled all the logs. They notched all the logs. They, we helped getting things together in the roof and stuff. We still have some more cedar shakes to be uh, getting uh, hewn, but uh, we have it together. We have got a cabin together that the kids built, and then we have uh, a kit per se, so you can be trying to replicate buildings with the kit, which will be by where the cabin is set up. And that, of course, is going to be probably in the children's area. It was last year. So with the advent of a lot of people doing things with old-time timbers and such, mm -hmm. um, do you teach the chinking part of it as well? I mean, we are, there's a lot to a we, log cabin. Yes, we are, <laughs> we are doing a log cabin that's built much more like a Lincoln log. It's not with the traditional chinking that you would have done because we want to in this wet again. climate. <laughs> uh, but you had different styles of chinking being <coughs> done for connecting logs sure. back in the day. Right. So you're, what did you say, Charles? I, I said we've got to have them take it apart again so the next set of students I can see. show how. That's why it's Lincoln Logs. I <laughs> so see. Chinking would be uh, uh, something we probably wouldn't want to do. No, exactly. They, uh, and I, I've seen it done with moss. I've seen it done with other materials as well. So yeah. We, we even have some smaller things that are interesting, both for adults and for kids. For example, uh, the federal prison gave us a small-scale uh, Conestoga wagon with blocks showing the various things that need to be packed into it. So you can try to figure out, okay, what do I take along on this trip across the country to the Oregon Trail? It's, uh, we've got just, I mean, there's always the limit as to how much space you have, what you can take, and how heavy it is. And uh, that's why you walked. The wagon well, was full. And, and the key to that puzzle is that there's not enough room to put all those things in there. So you have to make some decisions. So it's like Tetris. You've got to figure out how to do it. Well, no, it's like, what do you think you're going to need? <laughs> the toy, often the toys get left. Yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> and would you like to introduce your gosling? Oh, this is just one of my gosling. It's a little baby Emden. She is uh, about 10 weeks old. And uh, so she doesn't have all of her feathers in, and she's looking a bit scruffy until she gets all feathered up. We often have uh, birds or uh, friendly critters at the, at the uh, Harvest Fest, and... I almost always have a goose with me, so I'm sort of called Mother Goose by some people. Gee, imagine that. <laughs> Do we have a turkey this year? Uh, probably we'll bring Thomas. He's very friendly right now. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> He's, friendly He's even friendlier, friendlier than Dave who <laughs> went to Turkey Rama, but that was Ramsey's goose. Uh, yeah. So at least we're keeping up the tradition of Turkey Rama by having a turkey. <laughs> yes. Thomas, the turkey. Thomas is my turkey. Very good. Um, so would you like to talk about the uh, special of exhibits and demonstrations of horse-drawn equipment? We, we will have a, a brand new unit this year, uh, a new addition to Harvest Fest. Okay. Um, if you'll recall, if you've been there before, you've seen the steam-powered uh, thrashing machine, a very large steam traction engine that drives a big flat belt. Yep, gigantic belt. And powers the thrashing machine. Uh, before steam, uh, the other option to drive a thrashing machine was either with a hand crank or you would figure out a way for horses to do it. Sure. So this year we have acquired a what's called a four horsepower uh, engine. And it's a mechanism where four horses are walking in a circle and it drives a gearbox which turns a shaft underneath where the horses walk. Right. And th then there's a flat belt pulley and that drives a thrashing machine. Wow. It won't drive the big one. So we got a, a, a wood constructed 1870s thrashing machine that matches the four horsepower. Okay. So this is a brand new thing for us. It's, it's very rare and uh, it's very unique. So the people that are coming out are going to see something new this year. They will. There's something else they're going to see new, and that is that new antique uh, steam tractor we have. We now have two. But that is a rolling work of art, maybe a clanking rolling work of art, <laughs> but a work of art nonetheless. Uh, that, that will be powering one of our uh, uh, threshing machines um, when it's not being driven around. 
our Peerless is in the process of a restoration work right now, and I don't think we're going to have it painted in time yet or up and operational for that. But you can be seeing how far along we're getting with that project. That's awesome. But uh, there's something I might ask of viewers. One thing that we can't seem to find much anymore is gunny sacks. So if anybody's got a source of gunny sacks they'd like to donate uh, to the Historical Society so we can have genuine uh, sacks for putting the grain in, we'd be very appreciative. Well, they're hard to come by now. Burlap is expensive now for some weird reason because at the feed store in Newburgh when I grew up, they gave those bags to you for free if you needed some. So Not anymore. You know, they're very expensive. You can acquire them, um, but you know we, we like to operate on a thin dime. I understand that. <laughs> um, so let's talk about um, the stagecoach rides. We've got uh, Linda Claypool and her crew, so she'll have uh, stagecoach drives being drawn by mules. And uh, I'm, what is, is there a donation asked for that? Yes, yes, there yes. Is. yes. And if you are a uh, minor, uh, you need to be riding with your guardian. Sure. For that. The, the interesting thing about the stagecoach that, uh, that I find fascinating is this stagecoach is is not an original stagecoach it's a but it is an exact replica right of the stagecoaches that ran from portland to sacramento wow and if you can feature a stagecoach riding on leather springs and there were nine people inside the stage oh my three three and three people were smaller back then <laughs> it, it is it, when you get in there and you go around on the stage you get a real feel for what it would be like to ra ride for several days on a trip from Portland right. to Sacramento. And why so many people got seasick or motion sickness in stagecoaches. Well, they're pretty bouncy. <laughs> yes. Bouncy, and the Leather Springs right. provide kind of a rocking motion. Sure. And, and that's part of the reason why we allow this sort of living history stuff is to uh, make sure that you, you can really understand, because it, merely watching uh, Western movies and seeing a stagecoach, you, yeah. You get an entirely different conception once you've actually been inside a stagecoach and uh, ridden, e even for the relatively small rides that we have. One of the very unique things that occurred in Yamhill County's history was a stage run that went from McBinville through Yamhill over to Tillamook. And there was actually a hotel at the top, or near the top, because they uh, couldn't make it in one day. Sure. But that was one of the major ways that communication went back and forth between the Oregon coast and the Central Valley was over that stage line. So do you know where that um, hotel was, Tony? Uh, I, I don't know exactly yeah. where it was, but I, I know that they, they couldn't make it in a day and they needed that stay over. So will there be a parade of tractors this year? Yes, we're going to have a parade of tractors and... Uh, our uh, Dave Crookshank will be our MC for that. Of course he will. And we will be having a, uh, a lineup. We're having orphans are what's being featured this year. And uh, orphans are, there's a huge number of tractors that will be falling into the orphan category. But if it's a John Deere, it is not an orphan. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of tractors. We have multiple uh, versions of, uh, and in fact, there's even some competition between orange and green and otherwise. But, but this year, the, the feature is, those we have one of. We're so talk to me about an orphan for a minute. Well, uh, I, I think... Alice Chalmers, something out of the ordinary... I, I, Alice I Chalmers is an orphan. Uh, no, actually, Alice Chalmers no, is, is not, not an orphan. Okay, excuse me, you, I stand you, corrected. You, you, uh, <laughs> in fact, the Alice Chalmers folks and the John Deere folks battle back and forth. I'm sure they do. Uh, then you have uh, International Harvester is another big brand. Sure. But uh, you, you have a brand like an Oliver, uh, or even some of the older tractors. Uh, we will be, we have our fingers crossed, that we'll have an oil pull, which is a very, very rare tractor from about 1915. It'd be one of the first gasoline-powered tractors. Wow. So that was definitely an orphan, um, one of a kind. So tell me th about the tractors that have no rubber on their wheels, because you have a number of those as well. Right. Before rubber, they used uh, steel rim tires, Right. Uh, really sort of like a wide uh, wagon wheel uh, that had lugs. 
and this kind of dates me, but I remember as a kid seeing signs on the highway say, no lugs on the road. Because <laughs> the, the lugs just literally tear things up. Oh, I would think. So uh, just like farmers the would take tractors down the road, a gravel road's okay, but if they got on asphalt, uh-oh. Just rip it up. Yeah, so they'd have signs that say no lugs. So that, that tells you that the lug wheels were around in the late 40s and early 50s, sure. that, that long. And during the war, rubber was very hard to get. Oh, I would think, yeah, because it was all going towards the war effort. John Deere actually made a, made a few tractors during the war, and we have one that is made in, the, in 1942, and it has lug tires, even though rubber proceeded uh, right. in the late 30s. But John Deere went back to the lugs because they couldn't get rubber. Right. By the way, we might mention that um, we, we try very hard to make sure all of our stuff works. You know, maybe not some of those that we have been rusted through before we ever got <laughs> hold of them. Sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, we don't even acquire tractors anymore unless we have some uh, possibility of making that function because this is living history. I've used that word before. And we want these things to work. Now, sometimes it's a lot of fun as they get into the parade and don't work, but uh, uh, that's all part that of the happens. show. That happens. That's all. That's part of the show. Yeah, that's right. That happens on the farm now with new equipment. <laughs> <laughs> that's they, true. They fix it on the spot. Or they got tractors, cut the tractors away. <laughs> so we've got about seven minutes left, and so I want to rush through this stuff. Um, I know you have the Hutchcroft School, and um, you've already kind of described some of that. Um, Old time music, lots of great food. I assume the Kelchners are, yes, are providing are. the... Oh, yes. Yes. Um, so let's go ahead and go into some of the uh, photographs that Charles has taken. Um, so if, there we go. Well, that was actually shot while I was sitting up in the driver's seat on the, uh, the stagecoach. And uh, we kind of do around about the building here. But this is along uh, Highway 18. There's some of the rusted uh, stuff that we don't... Uh, uh, make work anymore. Those are just uh, draw people in. Right. Next. Uh, sometimes we have the uh, Dairy Princess out. This was, I think, uh, two years ago. Yes, her name's Jessica. And she's uh, lovely and uh, works very well with our agricultural theme. Next. Uh, I shot wow. this one because <laughs> I love the thought of a John Deere bicycle. <laughs> Got the John Deere name, John Deere color. It's a John Deere bicycle. <laughs> That's awesome. And a boys and a girls bike. Awesome. Uh, this is some of the demonstrations. Uh, that uh, is being uh, driven by uh, the steam tractor, if I mm -hmm. recall. And uh, they're shoveling that in there to uh, separate the the grain from the, uh, uh, the shaft. Talk about that old truck in the background, Charles. Uh, that's just one of the trucks we uh, have around, and that would have been, you know, fairly authentic uh, vintage. But uh, uh, we'll ultimately be loading all the gunny sacks or whatever uh, we yeah. have as substitutes on that to cart them away. Awesome. Uh, we're we're selling stuff too, uh, and we're selling more and more of the blacksmith-generated uh, things. So you can get door knockers and other stuff uh, now, but. Uh, uh, among them, uh, you can see in the background there, it's the Grist Millers. We have a vintage baseball team. Part of our living history is we put on 1860 uh, Roll demonstration baseball. games. And they're all in uniform using the old rules and the old... Uh, Ball and bats. Yep. Yeah, um, and um, uh, but no gloves, though. Uh, they didn't have gloves back then. You've got to be a real man to catch those hard balls. And Dave Rucker is an... In Involved he, in that. He came up with the idea and uh, organized the team. He's the pitcher and has won uh, four years in a row against the uh, Portland Pioneers, another vintage baseball game. Wow, that's awesome. We actually hope at some time to create a whole league in the county, uh, all the towns. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. Their own, their own uh, uh, baseball teams. But uh, you can get that sort of equipment uh, at the uh, merchandise shop as well. Awesome. Uh, we got uh, stuff for kids. This is just to show kids how pulleys work. Uh, they're all the same uh, weight there, but some of them are much harder to lift up. Uh, it depends upon the different pulleys. Yeah. 
These are just some of the good old boys uh, trying to make something work there. That restoration shop uh, is really important to us. Uh, but these gentlemen have the knowledge to put these things back together, uh, unlike uh, now you void your warranty if you work on your tractor. Uh, and now you just pull out the motherboard and stick another one in. But It'd be nice if that was that <laughs> simple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, these are some of the guys who make the things work. Don't move on yet, um, Ian. Um, you talked to me earlier um, when we were talking uh, about um, the knowledge base that these gentlemen have and, and many others that you'd like to videotape the historical society so people would know how to do this. Yeah, these things don't come with a manual that you can Google. <laughs> so what we'd like to do is create a manual. And by the way, this is another task need that the, uh, uh, the society has. If there's some people out there who would like to volunteer and come in, and watch as the restoration crew uh, repairs tractors, repairs whatever. We'd love to see that put up on our YouTube channel. That'd be awesome. Uh, for the rest of the world. Yeah. Okay, Ian. There's our, our Peerless. Uh, this is the one being restored at the moment. I don't uh, think you had a shot of the brand new one. You've got to come out and see that one. Uh, truly, I said it's a work of art. It really was. Uh, uh, this one is attractive as well, but those belts are what's running the uh, the threshers. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, you notice that that tractor was designed to go on asphalt by putting a band of steel over the lugs. I see that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Next. Wow. Uh, those are just some of the tractors that we have uh, that will be taking part in the Antique Tractor Parade. That's awesome. There's the coach. And people can ride that coach, they, right? They, they can. Yeah. Um, I know there's an extra fee involved. Yeah, it's a relatively small, a small fee, fee. Uh, but that's to uh, encourage a maximum number of people getting the opportunity. Sure. Also, 75% uh, of our operating expenses are raised by our various events, so anything we can do to help that along um, is, is really appreciated. Okay. That's called a hay walker. Um, it's the way you would load either grass or hay or straw uh, all by horses uh, because the, the walker literally does walk the hay up that ramp and dumps right. it into the, into the uh, wagon. Yep. And then on hay day, we have the equipment that will take it out of the wagon and turn it into bales. Okay. Um, this is one of the few chances for kids to actually sit on a tractor. That's great. Next. Music, of course. Of course. I know that, young man. <laughs> you know, we really do encourage families to come out, but I promise you that there is something for everybody of every age, whether you've got gray hair or no hair or uh, all the way down to uh, the youngest sorts. Yeah, kids under 12 are free, so yeah. we, we encourage the, the families to come. Parking is free. And admission is $8, $8 for eight, adults, eight, anyone yes. over 12. Right, anyone over 12, 8 bucks. Uh, if you're a member of the society, it's free. And you yeah. can join while you're out there. Oh, yes, you can. So we if you make join that at that, that, uh, that coming in the gate, you're in for free, and all our other events. We've got 12 events throughout, throughout the year. year. Right. And that cost is what um, for a family to join? Uh, it varies. It depends on whether you ha we have a senior rate, which I think is only $25. Okay. A family rate, I think, is 30 I think it's 35 then Maybe 30? 35 for okay. But uh, that's I nothing. Don't remember. No. You well, get to go all of these events. Go to a and movie. That gets the entire family. Right. Go to a movie and see what it costs. Oh, man. <laughs> it's 50 bucks really <laughs> fast. <laughs> Um, so we're running out of time. Um, so kids under 12 are free, $8 admission fee for adults over 12, um, and that pretty much other than the stagecoach ride, which is a donation, I would assume. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, let's talk well, about... Well, you know, you, you, the, the food is for sale. And the merchandise is for sale. Right. But other than that, right. we're, we're not nickel diming you to death. But the food is astronomically wonderful oh, I mean, yes. it's very, very reasonably priced yes it is and let's talk about um, 
farming and the agricultural diversity of our county and what the main draw to Harvest Fest is. We'll start with you, Tony. Well, I grew up in this county and spent 25 years in agriculture, <laughs> and I've watched a very dramatic change in what the ground is used for. Sure. And, uh, we live in a in a, just a, a verdant paradise when it comes to agriculture. Right. Uh, our our weather, our, our climate, uh, really, you can grow just about anything, and uh, they except do. things that really <laughs> demand very hot temperatures. Uh, but the diversity of, the, of agriculture is so much a history of our culture. Um, in addition to forestry, forestry played a huge role in the development of this county. There were two or three wood products businesses right here in McMinnville um, several years ago. But now it's all been changing. It's changing to grass seed. Uh, to hazelnuts. Yeah, hazelnuts are huge. Uh, grapes wine grapes for the winery. Right. We've um, got wine grapes, uh, a small sample uh, trellis of them, and we have, uh, don't have any hazelnuts, we do have some hops, well, we don't see many gardens. hops anymore. You but, have, you're your pioneer kids. We have the pioneer garden. And quickly, Charles, anything you'd like to say as we close? Uh, uh, there are very few museums around the country that are working museums as opposed to static displays. We're a living history, I've used that word before, but uh, it's how to learn our past. Right. So, go out to Harvest Fest. It's the 17th and 18th of August, and it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Cynthia and Gosling. And thank you, Tony. Thank you. And thank you for watching today.